Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. And my name again is Jeffrey Davis. We are streaming all the time, all of our stories, especially our next story. But if you uh, do want to listen to this story after it happens or are interested in other stories on Radio Entrepreneurs, you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher. That's quite a list uh, for us. But, uh, you know, our next guest, uh, I'd like to introduce a pretty important topic during this time as we're all, I think, watching our televisions and our monitors and our weather apps almost daily. Joe Coffey, Commissioner of City of Albany at Department of Water and Water Supply. You know, very honored that he took time out of his day to, to talk to us. And also, Victor Halas, Director of Sales and Partner Relationships at Opti RTC. Welcome, Victor and um, Joe, to uh, Radio Entrepreneurs. Thanks for having me. Thank you. you. Know, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, I, I think about, you know, my, my homes and the safety of my homes and flood management, I guess you're the, uh, you're that quiet, diligent person behind the scenes, Joe, that makes sure that I'm always safe in my home. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Well, what we're doing uh, today is I'm looking at the window at the gushing rainstorm coming down from the tropical storm that's heading up this way, taking advantage of Victor's technology. Uh, yesterday, in fact, we put a press release out to our uh, residents and say, hey, look, this thing is coming. We're expecting two to three inches of rain. It's going to come down in a short period of time. So I remember the discussion I had back in 2014 after a big rainfall where I had to apologize to 200 uh, property owners that lost baby pictures and wedding pictures and memorabilia and irreplaceable uh, family tokens that uh, were on a basement floor that flooded with backups and stuff like that. So we, since that time, have committed to uh, implementing technology and improvements to our system to minimize those types of occurrences. But even with that, yesterday, we reminded people, hey, it's common lessons learned. If you've been in this situation before, uh, be prepared, get the stuff off the floor, put plastic containers, etc. So, uh, you know, we've been working hard for the past five, six years since we've been part of this administration to build a little bit more resilient infrastructure uh, to try to manage these types of crises that we're going to have as the you know, global warming happens, we have more of these extreme events. Uh, so we, we can only do so many capital improvements in the system, you know, in any given year. So we're, we're balancing a lot of different variables. Well, uh, Victor, I don't know if you wanted to add to that. And uh, if you had a question as well, I didn't want to jump in and dominate our time together. Uh, no, that, that was great. We're working, uh, Opti is working with Albany Water Board to optimize their stormwater infrastructure and management by incorporating real-time monitoring and forecast-based controls to get more efficiency and, like Joe said, resiliency out of the system. So there are preparations that we can take before the event hits, like lowering uh, a lake system to create additional capacity, which is really exciting. But I'm curious, Joe, from your perspective in the last five years, how has that preparation changed in addition to the public engagement? How are you better now prepared uh, for these big storm events with all the improvements that you've made? Well, you know, I mentioned part A, which was the public awareness. Part B is what you just mentioned and what we're doing as we have the connectivity of our stormwater system. Uh, we're able to, as you point out, lower uh, some of the stormwater uh, management devices to allow more capacity and a little more balancing when we can put water back into the combined sewer system. We don't have these direct outlets into streams and rivers like a lot of other communities do. So we're balancing, you know, hundreds of millions of gallons of runoff and to try to mitigate these basement backups, mitigate the street flooding. And at the same time, as you know, we're in the middle of a consent order to minimize the uh, combined sewer overflows into the Hudson River so the tools that your company has provided us have enabled us to really uh, put all those pieces together and I think contribute to some successful mitigation of each one of those three different elements. And I think uh, just with the short time frame that we've had this, not even fully deployed into all of our system, we have noticed a uh, diminished number of overflows out of our biggest regulator. And I think that's due in great part to the technology that we've implemented with Opti. Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm not uh, unfamiliar with flooding. Uh, the, uh, 24 hours after I bought the home that I'm sitting in right now, we flooded in my whole basement, and it was not a pleasant experience for me. Uh, and it was, it, 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 you know, 
but you're you're in an area of the country that's kind of a, maybe a poster child for all of us because you have a 400 year old city i think you told us with a 400 year old infrastructure potentially you know you can't change everything overnight so how does how, how do you deal with all of this and this really gives us a template for other cities and towns and regions doesn't it i think it does you know and frankly we're not uh, you know reinventing the wheel we've learned a lot from some of the other communities that are dealing with the same same uh, sort of circumstances. Fortunately for us, we have not the financial constraints that a lot of other communities have. The Water Board has some some assets that we're able to invest and leverage for other grant applications. What we've found we've been able to do uh, with, you know, 600 to 800 miles of sewers and thousands of catch basins and manholes, and we can't replace all this infrastructure. We've got uh, arch sewers and, and uh, you know, that are 8, 10, 12 feet diameter going to the Hudson that were probably built back in the late 1700s. They're not, they can't be replaced. So we found ways that we can use um, uh, trenchless technology and lining and a lot of other different uh, methods that uh, engineering methods to extend the life of those. And at the same time, we need to build some infrastructure, uh, sideline equalization and detention to help us uh, with what we see as increasing amounts of runoff and these these incredible rain bombs that we see that are dropping three inches of rain in a half an hour to an hour, they're devastating on the system. And you can't have sewers big enough to take all that water off site. Again, the technology integration and the other things we can do to try to uh, manage that runoff with some equalization and detention, green infrastructure, you know, we've got a short period of time, but of all the things that we've done in the past five years, we've spent as much capital improvements in the city system in the, in the last six years that were probably spent in the 25 years before that. Um, we probably put $60, $60 million in that system. Uh, we, have, we have a five-year capital program that it looks like it's $100 million every, you know, five years, five years, five years. Uh, 20 million a year last year, we spent 29 million in the system. So it's, uh, as engineers that like to play in the dirt, we like uh, built-in projects, but it's a lot of challenge for our ratepayers to be able to do that kind of capital improvement and keep the rates affordable for our citizens. You know, we don't have the most, uh, you know, we've got a lot of poverty, you know, in our community and uh, people that are certainly challenged with uh, the jobless issues that have come out of the COVID issue. So it's a challenging time for all of us that manage uh, infrastructure and, and um, public utilities. Yeah. Joe, could, could you just expand how do you keep those rates as low as you do? I mean, what are a couple of the strategies that you're implementing? Well, uh, if you go to church for Sunday, every Sunday, and you get a lot of grant money to help you, that that's certainly a benefit. Uh, we've leveraged, I think, uh, Victor, we've got $36 million in grants over the past five years. That's $36 million that our ratepayers don't have to generate. And that's a substantial issue. And, and I think, frankly, uh, working with our in-house engineering staff. You know our deputy, Bill Simcoe, uh, uh, is a very talented engineer. Our engineering staff, the consultants we work with, they understand that we need to come up with uh, very creative ways to manage that so that we can get the most bang out of the buck. We've been very blessed with the grants, no question about it. That, that has helped us dramatically. But we also look at what I think we talked before, Jeff said, you know, the value of water. You know, you don't know how valuable it is until you don't have it. And uh, years ago, there was an economic development seminar in one of the local communities. We're talking about education and healthcare in New York State and this and that. The mayor of Amsterdam said, you know, not for nothing, but one of the greatest assets we have is affordable and safe potable water in upstate New York. And that's a very true comment. So uh, I think, you know, we're, we put it in the context that we can provide to our customers, Jeff, a thousand gallons of water for $3.70. And you go out and you buy a case of bottled water in one of the grocery stores, you're probably spending $3.70, just in perspective. Our average customer probably spends, I'm guessing, $40, 30, 20 to 30 to $40 a month for water and sewer service. Your cell phone bill is probably $100 a month. Your cable TV is probably $100 a month. Again, so we think we're pretty, we're a good value proposition for our customers with, uh, with our rates. But again, there's still going to be upward pressure on them for the capital investments we need to make. And you know, we're probably looking at 3% a year for the next five years. But even at that, you know, those average increases are going up maybe 11 to $12 a year. That's not too bad. 
So, Joe, uh, I'm going to date you a little bit, uh, probably closer to my age than Victor's, uh, and I'm going to pretend you're running the Bob, remember the Bob Newhart show when he had a therapy, he had his therapy roundtables. And I'm going to say to you, let's say I have you in a room with 100 people who have the similar job to you all over the United States, maybe Canada too, who have not addressed these issues in their towns. You're running this support group. What would you tell them if we were all in private with these 100 people? It, you know, in terms of helping themselves. Well, I'm probably north of your age. I was probably born before television was a very popular uh, dy media dynamic. And I remember as a 10 year old watching Bonanza when it was the first color TV show we saw. So, but I think the thing that we've learned and, uh, and I've learned this in my career as an engineer, tell the truth, be honest, be transparent, let your citizens know what they're dealing with. Don't hide anything. Don't try to sugarcoat anything. If you've got, aging infrastructure, let people know the challenges that, that, we, that they have. And I'll tell you one thing I've learned in particularly working now for the last five years in the public sector, after 40 some years in the private sector, your residents appreciate transparency and honesty and telling the truth. And uh, you know, I think that's the best thing we can do as, as uh, municipal officials. Well, I'm a big fan of transparency. I wish I could keep you on a lot longer and maybe we will get you back again. Uh, you know, we've been speaking with Joe Coffey, Commissioner, City of Albany, Department of Water and Water Supply, and I think, you know, clearly an essential employee right now for our economy. We're also speaking with uh, the one and only Victor Halas, Director of Sales Partner Relationships at R Opti, RTC. If someone wants to learn more, Joe, about what you're doing in Albany, maybe as a model for other towns or just to learn, because uh, you are a role model, believe it or not, uh, how would they find you? Well, I think the uh, certainly everybody, I made the mistake when I told you before about the meeting we had with the 300 irate citizens, I actually gave them my cell phone number, which is something I've learned probably not to do in the future. But uh, certainly we can be reached. Uh, my actual email is jcoffey, J-C-O-F-F-E-Y, at albanyny.gov. I'd love to hear from anybody. I love talking shop. And uh, certainly our City of Albany website, there's a little link that gets us to the water department and the projects we're working on. So we welcome people to visit us and talk to us. And frankly, we can learn from them as well. That's great. Well, that's the state capital also. So you have to keep the governor dry. So, you know, and he's actually, uh, we're actually working on a PRV in his backyard as we speak. <laughs> I guess you know where your priorities are. <laughs> and Victor, alas, uh, clearly someone who, uh, Everybody has to know as well. Victor, how do we find you at Opti RTC? So we are, our uh, website is www.optirtc.com and I can be also reached by email at vhlas, H-L-A-S, at optirtc.com. Look forward to hearing from everyone as well. Great, and you know, we at Radio Entrepreneurs, we're a big fan of transparency. I think this is what this one was all about and the challenges facing all of us. Let's keep everyone safe at home and dry. That would be nice. This is the end of this segment, and we look forward to more stories on Radio Entrepreneurs.